uh, today. I want to thank everyone for joining today. My name is David Vargas, and I'm the adult services here, adult services librarian here at the Belmont Library. And I started working at the Belmont Library in 2016, and it's really opened to my, it's really opened my eyes to all the good that our library system brings to the community, and it's made me. I feel like a very strong library advocate, um, and it's also challenged me to think of ways where we can continue to kind of push the envelope and bring services and events to our library system. So very happy to be here um, with you all tonight. So let's just take a look at the layout for the evening. I'll move my cursor out of the way. Okay, so we're gonna highlight a few different areas tonight when we talk about the Belmont Library. So we'll take a look at our library system, San Mateo County Libraries, just briefly. We'll talk about reoccurring monthly programs for adults. We will take a look at our non-traditional circulation items. Um, we nickname those items Library of Things. Mm -hmm. We will talk about our online resource collection, which I'm so proud of. And I think it's well worth the price of admission, which is free. <laughs> getting a library card because you get all you'll get access to some wonderful resources that you can access from home without setting foot in our libraries, you know, physically in our libraries. Um, we'll take a look at how you access free museum passes or discounted museum passes. Um, we're going to highlight some of the things, some of the maker activities that we put on weekly, which we title Make It and Maker Hangouts. We will talk about some of our interactive library exhibits that are happening in the Belmont Library, some, some new additions. Um, and we will briefly talk about our mobile memory lab, which is right, right in front of me. Um, it allows us to digitize old media. And then we'll have time for Q&A if there's any. And again, I want to thank you all. Ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. It doesn't have to only be in the Q&A session. It can be at any point. And I could elaborate a little bit more. Okay, so just looking at um, San Mateo County Libraries. The Belmont Library is one of the 13 libraries that comprises or makes up San Mateo County Libraries. Um, San Mateo County Libraries is part of the Peninsula Library System, which is a consortium between our 13 county libraries and other city library systems on the peninsula. For example, Redwood City, Burlingame, Menlo Park, Daly City. Um, so if you didn't know, with, with your SMCL, with your SMCL library card, you have access to all their collections as well, their physical collections. Um, and um, okay, so I have some pop questions for those in the audience. I bet you all know the answers. Um, but for my first question, what is the standard rate for a library late fee? You don't charge. Emily? It's zero. Zero. We went fine three years ago. So I hope, you know, we, we, we hope that removes, it removes a barrier for the community, right? I remember as a kid, my parents would dread taking me to the library because they knew that we returned books late. And because of those fines, we stopped going to the Fremont Main Library. And I didn't have the library experience I feel like our community has, um, you know, where there's leniency and forgiveness and accommodations that we can make, which makes sense, you know, for a modern library. Um, okay, next pop question. And it's kind of cut off, so I'm going to do my best to read it. If you borrow a library book from the Belmont Library, can you return it to the Burlingame Public Library? Joanne? Yes. Yes, you can. So any PLS uh, library, participating library, um, you can borrow a book from any of them and return that book to any of them, and it will go back to where the, you know, the library system, the item belongs to. So a really neat feature, because that's something that we get asked every once in a while at the front desk, and it's like you can absolutely return the Belmont book to the Redwood City Library System. It's something that we're really proud of. And on this map, I know the, uh, the picture's kind of pixelated, but it just kind of shows the 13 libraries on the right-hand side. There are geographic locations on the peninsula. So we have coastal libraries, we have libraries that um, are kind of in the heart, like found in the heart of the peninsula. And, um, you know, there's libraries, there's 13 libraries, and we're really excited about that. Our, in our most recent edition, was the North Fair Oaks Library, and that, I think that was added on maybe in 2021, a, few, a couple of years ago, it might have been 21 or 22. Okay, and it wouldn't be right um, unless I pointed out our strategic plan. So our strategic plan was released a few years ago and can be found on our website. Uh, it really helps to unify our library system in a systematic way and helps us uplift, uplift our communities and patrons. So just to pull um, two different 
two different points from the strategic plan. I'll just move this out of the way. There we go. So, um, so we'll start with our vision statement. San Mateo County Libraries ignite growth through transformative experiences. And I feel as a librarian here, we really pride ourselves on the experiences we provide to our community, the variety of programs, how diverse they are, the variety of reoccurring events, the um, supplies that we have available, the resources that we have available to the community on a daily basis. Um, it really matches our vision statement. And then when we take a look at our mission statement, San Mateo County Libraries strengthen our community by creating an inclusive sense of place and environment for learning. I'm almost re reminded by this um, during the school year on our weekday afternoons. If you haven't been here on a Wednesday afternoon, it's very dynamic. There, it's, it seems to be like the preferred third space for a lot of our students. Um, we are nestled really nicely in the community to be that third space where we have students walking down Ralston to come to the library, students from Carlmont. And I think from like, maybe it's 1 to 4 p.m. It's a bustling place, very dynamic. There's a lot of energy. Uh, but then in the mornings and in the evenings, it's a different library. There's a different feel to it. Um, you know, we, and we also are a place for working professionals that have, you know, remote work opportunities. They'll come in here. When we were experiencing power outages not too long ago, the library, we, I think we stayed open a little later and a couple of our libraries did as well, but people were coming to us because they didn't have power at home. You know, they didn't have, maybe the, it's too dark to use the restroom, whatever the circumstances were, it's so great to position ourselves to be a resource in a third space for our community members, to be there for them in a trusted organization. Um, so let's take a look at our reoccurring library <laughs> programming for adults. Since I'm the adult services librarian, I just really wanted to plug um, some of these uh, reoccurring events because there may be people that are attending or that will watch this later that may not know that we have these um, a wealth of diverse um, events that that happen regularly. Okay, so um, just to kind of look at it from a monthly standpoint. Um, so for the first week, the first uh, Wednesdays, we have several things that are happening, but we have our LGBT, LGBTQ plus book club that happens at four o'clock p.m. It's virtual. So if you're interested, you can sign up online for that and attend via Zoom. Um, we have our first Wednesday book club that meets in person. I believe most of the, the subject matter is fiction, um, but it takes place right here in this room. And there's a nice um, group of uh, regulars that come and attend. And they'll read a book together and, and discuss. Um, we started a watercolor art program with a, a community member named Jean. That happens, that started back in May, and it's going to run monthly through, we have it going through December. So for those that are interested in watercolor, and Jean's a great artist, so topics could range from tropical plants to, to roses to a variety of things. But it's really neat to have some, some like a recurring art program for those that want to learn more about watercolor, watercoloring. The Teach Learn Guitar Club um, also started just last month, and this is a uh, driven by a community member named Tom. He thought, the library has book clubs. Let's have something like a book club for musical instruments. So the Teach Learn Guitar Club, the group will meet monthly. They'll talk about what song they want to learn. They'll have a month to learn it, and they'll come back and play the song, talk about what worked, what did it. And we've never offered this before. I think it was just, just a brilliant idea, and I'm glad that our, our library manager, Anna Coach, let us move that particular program forward. Um, if you don't know our poet laureate, Monica Corday, we have um, the virtual poetry night that's hosted at 7 p.m. on the third Tuesday of the month. Um, it used to take place in person at the Belmont Library, but um, we were able to adapt during the pandemic. And it really opened up the doors for not only people in San Mateo County, but people nationwide. And I think sometimes maybe even people in other countries, they'll come and attend this particular event. And it's all online, so you know from the convenience of your home as long as you have an internet connection. And it's great. Um, Monica usually features guest poets, and um, and then there is an open mic section at the very end where um, local poets or independent poets can share their work and kind of have a you know have a network to um, share out with when it comes to poetry. Documentary club is something we we brought back in March, and uh, it happens on the third Wednesday of the month at six p.m. We hosted it last month in the fireplace area and it was nice and cozy and um, it's slowly picking up attendance. But if you're ever up, you know, for watching, 
watch documentaries yeah, yeah. talk about them. Yeah, we'll have this like a light discussion afterwards. But it's kind of it's yeah. really easy to just kind of kick back, <laughs> watch a movie, and then have some light discussion after the fact. Um, you know, because there's a lot to be learned from film. Um, and then we have the Peninsula Ukulele Group, also known as Pugs. They'll meet at 5.30 p.m. on the third Wednesday of the month. And they invite anyone, beginner um, ukulele players, intermediate ukulele players, advanced ukulele players. They usually, I think, start out with a song and then it kind of just turns into a jam afterwards. But they've been working with us for years and um, they have a wide range of players. And sometimes they'll be guest musicians that are maybe well known in the ukulele community. And it's neat to think that all these great things are happening here in the city of Belmont. Um, we're finally bring, bringing Trivia Night back, and I cannot be more happy. Mm -hmm. This is back by popular request. We, it's just seems like as the months have gone on, we went into hiatus during the pandemic. Pre-pandemic, we would see numbers 30, 40, 50, 60 people that would come out wow. once a month. The library would curate the trivia. We'd get together in teams. We'd have light refreshments. It was just so fun. It was a neat way to meet people, and um, it was it was a really interactive program that challenged everyone and you know people that come are, are usually good sports and this room can get pretty full <laughs> so we're happy to finally bring it back so that's going to be the fourth Wednesday of the month starting at 5 30 so 5 5 30 to 7 30 we used to be open a little later so we could push back the start time but um I guess one of the things to mention is we are open four nights a week so Monday through Thursday until 8 p.m. In the past, I think it used to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday till nine. So we added an extra day, um, you know, uh, when it comes to having evening hours, and that's worked out really nicely for us. Um, so another service that we're very proud of, and I know Bridget's listening in, so thank you, Bridget, for helping us kind of start this idea. We call it Senior Tech Help or Drop-in Tech Help. That happens. Um, it's progressed. We were having it on the first and third Saturdays of the month, where people of any age, including seniors, who come in and get help from volunteers with whatever tech needs they have. So maybe that's bringing in your iPhone because you just got it and you want to start saving contacts or learning how to do email basics or you know whatever you were kind of interested in. And um, our manager, Belmont Library, thought, let's try to offer this. We had enough um, interest from volunteers. We, I think we have maybe like eight to 10 Carl Mont students. All the volunteers are high school students. Um, but with that, we thought, hey, let's maybe see if we can get two to three volunteers to come weekly. Let's kind of stretch that out to make it um, uh, just kind of have more consistency with, with the time and, you know, have it every week. And last week, we saw five or six people come really fast at the top of the hour. So we felt stretched thin, but it's neat to see. We, we're hoping that the service is growing. And I have to give a, a kudos to the City of Belmont volunteer, Edward, who thought to bring this forward. And, you know, we were able to have a couple meetings and, and, and launch this service. I think it was maybe back in March when we launched it. So it's happening every Saturday in June. We're gonna try to have it every Saturday in July and August, and then just try to keep the momentum going while we can. Um, that's from one to 3 p.m. Uh, in the amphitheater, I'm looking straight out there. Um, every Monday at 11 a.m. we have Tai Chi. So we have two Tai Chi instructors that come out and it's actually a pretty popular program. Um, I think there might be an advanced or maybe an intermediate level class and then a beginner's class, but it's pretty well attended and everyone that attends seems to only have the great, you know, positive things to say about it. So pop question for everyone that's here. What would be a great program addition for the Belmont Library? Susan. I want to have a game night. Game night? Like, yeah. a, like is it, card games or board games or you know, something for adults. Would then. it be like just a bunch of games out or a particular game that everyone's participating in? I would think a bunch of games out okay. people would want to try to, because like we had one game day here. Yeah. But we had it on Sunday. I did it with the game people in um, the guy that owns the game store, Gator Games. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, but it was it was in the afternoon on Sunday, so it was, it was a bunch of little kids. Mm -hmm. But it'd be nice to have one in the evening that that's adults, because kids, adults like to play. You might yeah. not have somebody at home to play with. That's a great point. So I think it, that would be great. It's noted. Okay. I, we'll see if we can. I'll, I'll mention that. Yeah. yeah. If and at any point, I will share my email address. Um, at the end, you can send me an email if you can't think of one right now. But I'll, I'll, you know, set aside another minute if anyone has any ideas that they'd like to see, or that you've seen at other library systems that you think that would be great here. 
A lot of servants in the Friday program to the Sequoia Hospital. Oh, yes. We used to call that maturing gracefully. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A lot of people have been asking about that. Okay. I will look at that. Okay. Come um, on in. Yeah, it's welcome in if you like. Okay, well, um, you know, if anyone has anything else, we'll take it. We'll also have Q&A. You can mention it here. Yeah. Um, I'll share my email. So, are you going to do tech classes again? Um, oh, like themed tech yeah. classes? I'll write that down. Because you we, were so good at that. <laughs> we want, I miss those. Yeah, I think there's more conversation to have. We're out, we have a new librarian that's going to be starting with, with us very shortly that you're familiar with. His name is Ismael Betancourt. He's coming back. Coming back. Oh. And he has a strong technical proficiency and I think would be a great fit to, when to is look he at coming? It on Monday. So we'll have a familiar face. Oh, yeah. that's great. So I will note um, tech, you know, theme tech classes because it's important in terms of digital literacy. It's important. Okay, we'll move forward. Okay, so just this is just kind of some logistics for the drop-in tech help or senior tech help. Uh, let's move forward. All right, so let's take a look at our library of things, non-traditional circulation items. And I have a few of them out here today. So after the event concludes, if you want to take a look at some of them and ask some questions, I'm going to hang around until we close. Um, but here's our list. So I think some of you, this is a growing list. I probably, I may be missing some things and there are some forthcoming new additions that will, will be added to this list. We're hoping to launch something new in July. And, um, but we're, it's, it's really, I feel like set our library system apart. And we've seen a lot of use when it comes to these particular library of things items. So hotspots, um, I, I believe currently we have hotspots that are provided, that are serviced by Verizon and T-Mobile. Um, we used to have Sprint in the past, but I think currently it's Verizon and T-Mobile in every location. All 13 of our locations have them. They are um, high in demand. So I would say if you're looking for one, because it's a three week loan and we are, I, I'm just gonna say we are a fine free system. Um, if you need one for a particular maybe vacation or reason, they're not reservable. So you can always call our 1-800 number. That's 833-937-7625 and call in advance and just say, I'm looking to borrow a hotspot. Is there one available at your branch? And depending on where you live in the community, you might be nestled between two SMCL libraries. Maybe you're, you have San Carlos to the left of you, Belmont to the right of you, and you can try a couple just to secure a hotspot. What's a hotspot? It provides you with internet access. Um, so if you don't have the internet at home, the hotspot becomes like a, a wireless modem and router that you can connect your digital devices really? to. Yeah, um, it's pretty small. It's maybe the size of a wallet, like a, you know, a, a wallet. And um, some of the other things that you'll see. Oh, one, one last thing that, one fun fact about the hotspots that I've tried and tested in real time. Um, they work pretty well anywhere in the continental United States. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if they, they work well in Hawaii as well. I was in Wisconsin for a visit and I had homework to do and I borrowed a hotspot <laughs> and I had service in Wisconsin from the hotel. Wow. And I got to work on my, my homework out there. And it's just it's fantastic. Um, our laptop combos, think of hotspots paired with the laptop. That's also a three week loan. And we also have Google Chromebooks. Um, I have a Chromebook right up here on the table in front of me. So if you, if you think I need a laptop because X, Y, Z, I don't want to buy a laptop or, you know, maybe mine is I let someone's using it. We could stand to we have visitors in town, we can stand to benefit from having another laptop at the house. You can just borrow one from the library, give it a try. You have nothing to lose. Um, GoPro cameras. One fun story that I can think of GoPro cameras. Over the summer, someone was returning a GoPro camera. I was at the front desk. So I'm checking to make sure all the components are there. And um, there is a tripod that you can, monopod tripod that you can hold in your hand that mounts the GoPro to the top. And as I was checking that, a bunch of water came out and they go, oh, the, the GoPro's wet. She goes, yeah, we took it to Hawaii and uh, that is, you know, Hawaiian Pacific Ocean water. That is just, and I was going to Hawaii like two weeks from there and it just brought a smile to my face. The GoPros are waterproof. Oh, They're okay. also, that's they have voice command features. You can mount them to, um, you know, if you buy a GoPro mount for maybe $20 on Amazon, you can put it on your helmet or on your car or whatnot. You, I think the circulate, the, the loan period is three weeks. It comes with an SD card. So you can capture those, those fun excursions, transfer them to your computer when you're done, not have to buy one, just borrow from the library. 
Um, one of the things that's a little more recent, I want to say within maybe the last year, year and a half, California State Park passes. Um, and we will, I'll show you a slide in a second that uh, brings to life the California State Park passes by a picture. But I, I feel like we have limited supply of California State Park passes and San Mateo County Park passes at a library. They are pretty popular, but I think we, it's safe to say we have maybe somewhere in the ballpark of four to six of these passes. Families will come in, um, you know, they'll plan ahead and they'll, they know they want to visit a county park or, you know, state park. And um, they'll come and borrow it from the library. I think the loan period on that is three weeks. It's just like a laminated placard that you, you put to your rear, your rear view mirror and it gets you in. There's participating locations. I think there might be like 200 participating state park locations. So you just want to make sure you do your research ahead of time. Because if you go to a non-participating location, you'll have to pay the entrance fee. But with 200, you should have some options to choose from. Wouldn't it be great in the future to have national park passes? Yeah. I was in Yosemite on Monday and Tuesday, and it was just spectacular. Um, bicycles. I have a bicycle out in front of us. All 13 of our libraries now loan bicycles to adults. It's a one-week loan period. And um, one of the great things with our bicycles, they're really low maintenance, flat free tires, nice big basket to hold some cargo in the front. There are multiple speeds so they can kind of handle hilly terrain. They're not mountain bikes, so you're not going to find shock absorb absorption systems on there. But, you know, to, to borrow a bicycle from the library because you want to get out and explore the community in a different way. Um, again, worth the price of admission for having a library card. And we've, over the years, we've had some really good, um, I want to say success stories that have come from them. I remember hearing in the past, one before it went to all 13 libraries we have we've we have a, a library customer that frequents the foster city library they didn't have it yet so we came to the belmont library to borrow one took the bicycle back to foster city then the next day rode the bicycle from foster city to half moon bay round trip and they go how did you get there did you ride down the 92 and he goes no i took the back the you know the back roads or the back trails they go my goodness that must be like 50 miles you did in one day you know, great endurance, state, you know, so I, I just thought that was a really neat case, you know, kind of a, a case to kind of showcase. And then um, and another one was at the Half and Bay Library, someone checked out a bike to visit their mother on Mother's Day, <laughs> um, just for the day, brought it back to the library. I, from time to time, I'll, I'll you know, I, I will pack it up in the back of my SUV and I'll ride around the East Bay with that, with that same bicycle. So it's, it's great to have, you know, it's great to have. And we hopefully during the summer, we'll see um, our use usage pickup um, because the weather's so nice out in San Mateo County during the summertime. You started that, didn't you? I did, yeah. So, and it's nice that it's spread to uh, all 13 of our libraries. It just started at Belmont. It was just a pilot. Um, huh. Ukuleles. So, if you ever want to borrow a, a ukulele or ukulele, we have several other branch. I believe the loan periods, it's either one week or three weeks, but you can see an example right there. It should come with a case and a tuner. Um, and I don't know, it's just a nice thing to have, something for, for people of all ages, I want to say. Um, and then another one that we have here displayed on the table, it's something that rolled out, I want to say maybe back in 2018, home energy and water savings kits. So there's different measurement tools in there, different consumables that you can use around your house to reduce um, you know, the energy that's emitted. Um, like one of the things that I'm reminded of that usually comes with the kit are aerators for your sink low flow shower heads, LED light bulbs that can be used, weather stripping, things like that. And then of course, tools to measure um, the energy that's you know, being produced by, by your house. So that is a neat thing. I think it was by the Office of Sustainability, if I'm not wrong. Okay, time for another pop question. You quit, you <laughs> skip. Did I skip which, oh my gosh, I do not want to skip the sewing machines. Okay. So that was also a, a pilot that started out at maybe four libraries. And I think there was maybe three sewing machines per location. We were able to um, accommodate a few more sewing machines. So I, I believe all 13 of our libraries, including Belmont Library has a sewing machine. And that's been really neat. I think we added it to the library maybe six months ago. And we've had, uh, we've had people borrowing it. And it's neat to see, I mean, I, my eyes have completely opened to sewing machines. We have eight dedicated sewing machines here at the Belmont Library that we use for maker activities. And all, all the good that has come from these sewing machines has made me a firm believer that all libraries should have this 
either for in library use or for home use because you know there's just so much you can do with clothing repair um we have um yeah, we'll talk about them a little more but we have a group of high school students that come weekly to create their own clothing they want to start their own clothing wow. label and they're working on t-shirts they're working on hats they're doing a bunch of different things in the library was able to help kind of facilitate this activity and provide a transformative experience that we talk about in our strategic plan so very very proud and i don't ever want to miss so we should say thank you call me out on anything i miss because well, it's likely it's an important sewing, thing. The Friday sewing machine group is kind of a social Thank you. activity. Can I mention that too? Mm -hmm. On Fridays, that should, I missed one on the reoccurring program. We have a Friday sewing hangout from 10 to about 1 p.m. where we'll put out four or five sewing machines. We'll have a library staff member there. We'll have accessories, fabric. And we're just kind of there to help people get started. And we usually see maybe four to six people that come. But we'd love, to, I would love to see that number balloon up and, and really grow that out. Because I think um, there's a lot of community driven learning and intergenerational learning that can happen from some something um, as maybe something like sewing. And uh, so I'd love to see that build up. Oh, okay. So, pop question What is the future library of things item you'd like to see at the Belmont Library? There's embroidery on the machine. On the, we have an embroidery machine here. Oh, you do? We have one. Oh, one. Yeah. Okay. But some people will ask for surgers. It's like that's the, that's something we don't offer. Yeah. yeah. Surgers are handy. Yeah, yeah. That would be a nice thing. Mm -hmm. Get extra money with starting mm -hmm. And back to the other thing about the uh, maybe a crochet and knitting. Um, oh, okay. Let me write that down. You have a sewing group, but I'd like to crochet. But if you're doing it with somebody, you know, I'll do it more likely if I'm sitting there with other people. Yeah, I good think point. San Carlos has that. They have that okay. Oh, okay. But it was great to have here at the library. Maybe that's something that we can look to see. Another, we really like some of these community driven programs because sometimes as a staff, you're, you're stretched thin or you may not have that expertise. Yeah. But if you find someone in the community, you know, I feel like it just grows faster and it's even more impactful. You used to have a staff member that taught crafty things. Teresa, uh, Teresa Saito. She was our and former that, adult service. That library. was really fun. She had a monthly craft program that would really that was really well received so that you might add that to it okay um that's a good idea um one of the things i forgot to mention when it comes to reoccurring program programs and one-off programs we're having a for the for the pride month on monday june 12th this room is going to turn into a line dancing slash square dancing room um it's going to be led by the el camino reelers and i have not seen this room used for line dance or square dancing and i'm really excited about that some of these um an ordinary or not usual programs are some of the ones that really get me excited to see what how we can transform the community or offer something new and see what kind of reception it, it gets and i think everyone when it comes to square dance or line dancing you have an instructor that's teaching you step simple steps and it's kind of a communal thing it can be a lot of fun so i'm hoping that's what we see on monday uh okay so we're gonna move this forward Okay, so for some of the things like let's say you're interested in reserving a sewing machine um, directly in front of me, we have our mobile memory lab that's going to be here through June 22nd. Um, you will want to make a reservation online for some of these things, you can try um, going to the front desk and asking a library staff member to help you out. But if you know you're going to need a, a, a library bicycle because you have family in town and you just need a fourth bicycle for your household, by reserving it in advance, you can secure that particular library thing item for yourself. So I just kind of have a like a breadcrumb trail up here at the top. So um, to, to get to our menu to reserve equipment, you'll just follow the breadcrumb trail here on the screen. And if that's ever hard, if Freak, happen to forget or whatnot, you can always call our telephone number again. That's 833 937 7625 and ask for um, help reserving equipment. Every library has their own kind of menu or of modules for equipment. So the different libraries may have different items. So, depend, so this is a look at the Belmont Library. Um, if you look at Atherton, it may look different because they have different equipment. Um, but it's useful. And so if you're interested in making a reservation for a mobile memory lab that's here through June 22nd, you can look there. Um, I will again share my email at the end of the slideshow. So if you're hoping to, if you don't see any availability, you can always reach out to one of us staff members by email or by the telephone number I just mentioned. 
to um, inquire about availability. Um, and then here's just some of the pictures of those library things items. We have our sewing machines. We have our ukuleles, two of our former standout librarians, Michelle and Kayla Marie um, Feigard. And then a picture of the, the library family, the Brisbane library. Um, so just some of the things that we're really proud of. In a lot of these library things items, they were um, pitched by library staff. So if you've ever watched the show Shark Tank, we have something very similar for library staff. It usually happens annually where you will prepare a presentation. So just like the, I did for the bicycles and you will pitch it to administrators, managers, staff members in hopes of securing votes for your idea. Um, pitches with the most votes when funding for bringing their idea to life. Uh, another, some, some of the other pitches you'll see in the library right now when you get out and we'll talk about one coming up is our bug exhibit. That's a recent one where we brought live insects to the library. Um, another one is our art table that's um, located near the front desk. Now all 13 of our libraries have art tables that provide art supplies and art activities every day for our 13 libraries. And it's just really neat to see the creativity and the dedication that staff put into bringing these new ideas to the forefront. Okay, and then here's a look at just to talk about our state park passes a little more. According to our website, the California State Library Parks Pass program is a partnership between California State Parks and the California State Library. There are many participating state parks, and again, all 13 of our libraries have a limited number of passes available. So if you're hoping to reserve one, they aren't reservable. If you, I guess I'm, what I'm trying to say is if you're hoping to secure one, call in advance and just see if they're available. Yes. Don't you have museum passes as well? Yeah, we'll get more to talk about too. Okay. Um, everyone um, with a SMCL two, uh, library card code at 29041, um, and there's a, a, one other code, um, you'll be able to have access to these museum passes and, and local attractions, and it's fantastic, fantastic. Um, our online resource collection, another thing that I've come to know um, over the years since you know, I, I worked at the Belmont Library. So just to highlight a few, Canopy for documentaries and independent films, Calm for mindfulness and meditation, Hoopla for ebooks, audiobooks, music, television, movies, and magazines, oh. all at the touch of your, you know, all, all in your, you know, in your smartphone by the touch of your fingers. The New York Times, um, online access, National Geographic Kids, EBSCO host for, um, you know, database, online scholarly journals. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to highlight a few more, but with your library card, you have access to these wonderful resources completely free of charge. Okay, so to spotlight a few more, so Calm, Mindfulness and Meditation, you can install that. And I believe when you, um, when you request Calm through our website, I think the duration is, it might be six months, I want to say. It's either six, I believe it's six months. So you'll fill out a form and you'll get emailed instructions on how to complete your registration to use Comp. Then you would download it to your, your smartphone device or maybe access it through in um, a web-based browser. Creative Bug is great. It's, a, it's like a library of video-based tutorials for art and craft lessons. So if you um, happen to know any friends or family members that are looking for ideas for crafts, it's a great place to start. LinkedIn Learning is a wonderful resource where industry professionals will teach tech-related video tutorials. So imagine you're, you're hoping to brush up on your Microsoft Excel um, skill set. You can watch these uh, courses and um, you know just take it one day at a time, take it in chunks, and it will um, track your progress as you move forward through a course. And you might even get um, like a certificate at the end of completing the course. But there is a wide array of um, content available on LinkedIn Learning. So just to look at some of the periodicals, again, EBSCO, <laughs> Flipsters for Magazines, National Geographic Kids, News Bank for um, Newspapers, New York Times Online, Wall Street Journal Online, um, just a lot to choose from. In terms of ebooks and audiobooks, the big three, we're, we're continuing to grow our resources and our collections for this, but for a long time, our big three was Access 360, Hoopla, and Overdrive. They all have their own apps that you can install with their own different collections that you can search from when it comes to finding an ebook or audiobook. One of the great things with Hoopla that's different from the rest is all the, the entire collection is available all the time. 
with um, some of the other providers, you may only have a certain amount of licenses per title. So like if you wanted Harry Pod, you might only have five licenses and you, you put it on hold and you kind of wait in the queue for that to become available. With Hoopla, everything's available. Um, but um, the structure's a little different. I believe you get 20 loans per month, but not bad. I mean, and you know, if you, you have a significant other, if you have people in your household, there's ways to, um, you know, kind of exceed that amount just by having multiple library cards because you have a large household. Um, Canopy is great. You get 10, 10 loans per month, but there's just a wealth of thousands and thousands of independent films, documentaries, um, things that, you know, you, you may save money on um, by using Canopy to access this content. And um, again, there's an app that you can install and I think you can watch it via web browser as well. Pronunciator is what we offer for language learning. Um, what's really unique about Pronunciator is you can dictate your, your native language or your native tongue and then dictate what language you want to learn in. So maybe, you're, maybe your native language is in English, maybe it's like Cantonese. So you can say, you know, I speak Cantonese and I want to learn um, Mexican Spanish or whatever it may be. I think there's like 147 different languages you can choose from. And there's different uh, approaches to learning once you're in, a, in their modules. So there's like short bursts, like daily lessons that may, may only last five minutes. There's um, courses that you can curate the subject matter. So you can pick some different categories. I'm interested in learning about um, leisure or spirituality or business etiquette. You can pick some of these modules and it, from, from there, it kind of builds you rather quickly on um, a course. And you can set the duration of the course. I want my course to last four weeks. I want my course to last 52 weeks. Um, and there's a lot of different um, activities that can involve your web camera, that can involve the microphone of your device so it can hear you say a word and, and, and rank you or score you. So it's, it's very neat. And again, price of admission, free of charge, can't beat it. It's a great starting point. Um, from there, this is just, again, this is maybe, maybe a fifth of what we have to offer. Um, so if you want later on, I can show you how to find this, but basically if you're on our website, Underneath the browse menu, there's online resources and you can just click on A to Z list to see everything. These are just some of the ones that I've used in the past that I thought to highlight. Um, pop question, <laughs> pop question again. Um, what would be a great online resource edition for San Mateo County Libraries? Any ideas, anything that you use that you're not seeing currently in this list? And you can always bring it up later in email. Um, your ideas. Epcot or whatever that. Say it again. Epcot. Epcot. What is that? E-P-O-C-H. E Epoch? What is Epoch. it? What is, what is it? Epoch? It's a mag. Well, it's a. Oh, Epoch. Is it the Epic Time? Epoch Time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They, okay. they pronounce it all different ways. So okay. I never know. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. But it's, that. it's a. Yeah. It's a new That's paper, a, but it's also an online. It's my understanding, you can just access it free online, though, right? No. Oh, if there's a subscription. Yeah. Yeah. Online? I paid okay. for it. Okay. Anyone else have any ideas? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. How would you could do it, but it's like masterclass. Man, oh my yeah. gosh, like right? Have like a short period, you know. Yes, that would be a dream come true. I'm noting it local. down. They're, are they are they based out of San Francisco? Exactly. That's fantastic. There's we have several that are similar to that, but I don't know if you're going to see the high caliber professionals that master classes sources out. I mean, the, yeah. the cream of the crop. I feel like is what you yeah. see in those, those master yeah. class in those master classes. Yeah. So that would be really neat. It's a great suggestion. Okay, we'll move forward. Okay, so let's talk about our museum passes. They're provided by an organization called Discover and Go. And here's your breadcrumb trail at the top in case you want to access it through our website. Remember, you just need to have a library card to have access to it. Um, you can call us over the phone and we can walk you through the steps. You can come in straight to the front desk. We can walk you through the steps. It's fairly simple. Um, so other, there are other participating city libraries as well, but I know San Mateo County Libraries subscribes to the service. So um, in one of the um, statements on our website, um, I think on our FAQ for Discover and Go states, you must live within the service area of San Mateo County Libraries in order to log in and reserve um, passes. Opens a new window was something that was copied and pasted over. So that was probably a hyperlink. So excuse me for not removing that. Um, but some of the local attractions that I was able to find 
um, include the Asian Art Museum, the Young Museum, Legion of Honor, Oakland Museum, Santa Cruz Museum of Art and History, UC Botanical Garden at Berkeley. There's a lot more. And one of the things I've learned in the past is when you, when you go on this page, you can select all attractions and see all the different organizations, museums, places that participate, but that doesn't mean they're always available. I think for every organization or every attraction, there's a limited amount of tickets that are available. But from my experience, I believe the top of the month, that's when we replenish. So if you're looking for something that might be highly sought after, try looking at the top of the month, maybe early, you know, in midnight, if you're up that late, <laughs> 6 a.m., 5 a.m., um, if it's really important for you to go. Um, but usually, you'll select the calendar date and it will show you everything that's available on that given calendar date. And it will tell you the terms. It might say two free passes for adults, or it might say um, free for a family of four, you know, free passes for a family of four. It will list it. And there's ways, so like, let's pretend one maybe said one free adult pass or one free pass. If you have multiple people in your household with library cards, that might be a workaround for you to get everyone to go on that quote unquote field trip with you for free or for you know a discounted rate but it's great it's it's popular and i think it's something that's kind of overlooked or not known about so i'm glad that you know the city's letting me bring this to light right now um let's see if i have another picture of that no that's it okay so we're going to talk about um some of our weekly maker activities that happen um, bridging the digital divide and offering transformative experiences by way of maker is something that San Mateo County Libraries has invested in and takes a lot of pride in. Um, so just this past summer, so about a year ago, we looked at quantitative and qualitative survey data from Belmont community members as what kind of equipment they'd like to see in a Belmont maker space. Currently, we have an interim makerspace. We don't have the full-fledged makerspace like some of our libraries have, but our administrators were very kind to give us funding to purchase some of these items that the community was asking for. So um, this past summer, we added a wealth of new equipment to our, our I want to say arsenal, but to our library um, when it comes to maker. Eight sewing machines, like I mentioned earlier, one Glowforge laser cutter, four Ultimaker 3D printers, a vinyl cutter, 15 iPads, and you're seeing them right here. The iPads have been extremely popular for digital artwork and um, robotics. Um, five digital cameras, 15 uh, robots that you can pair to your iPad to, to work on block-based coding. Um, the, the 15 is wrong here, 10 little bits kits by Spiro to teach uh, elementary age students about circuitry, you know, circuitry for beginners, podcasting and music recording equipment. We have the Adobe Creative Suite on five of our computers. So if you're interested in digital editing, maybe video, photography, or you know, everything Adobe has to offer, we have jewelry making supplies. That's been extremely popular and not intimidating. You just set out the materials, um, elastic string, beads, um, earring hooks, things like that, and kind of let your imagination run wild and people are making some wonderful things. And I have an example right here of us pairing a laser cutter. We'll pass it around with jewelry making supplies to make some custom earrings. And that was made in a matter of minutes. Um, someone was able, you know, I think someone was able to put that together. And they're beautiful. Yeah, they're really nice. So they able to make a nice gift for people as well. And um, these are, that's just one, one outcome, one positive outcome. So do they outcome. have somebody who teaches you how to do the Yeah, it's actually, we have an event happening right now. Um, our, uh, my colleague, Selena Yu, has been overseeing the uh, maker activities here at the, the Belmont Library. And there's a great turnout tonight in our, our maker hangout. So let's talk a little bit more about these weekly activities. Um, we repurposed our Oracle room to be a fabrication room. So in the past, Joanne, you'll remember, it was a dedicated computer lab. Then right before the pandemic, it was our teen center. Now it's um, our interim maker space where you'll find the where you will find the 3D printers, laser cutters, vinyl cutting machine, um, and a bunch of other things. Um, our homework center, um, it's kind of like a pop-out room. We will have um, podcasting activities, circuitry events. Sometimes it's our overflow. Sometimes it's um, used for themed classes when it comes to 
um, you know, tech-based workshops. We, we did one not too long ago, focusing on AI chatbots like ChatGPT and using ChatGPT to create podcasts, mm -hmm. looking at the different um, AI accessible tools online. And we did that in the homework room. We just pulled out a projector screen and projector and you know, that became a, like just like a classroom for the evening. It was really special. Um, also, um, music recording. Uh, you know, we will use that room for music recording when there's musicians that want to come in and take advantage of the equipment. And I hope that's something that continues to grow. Okay, so um, our first type of weekly uh, maker activity is called Make It. It's a reservation-based system. So let's say you want to come in to use our laser cutter or 3D printer, um, and you want to use the room, you know, with your with a group of people or just to yourself, as opposed to using it with the community. We have a reservation service called Make It. You can visit our website, look for availability, and sign up to have help from a library staff member for one hour. We offer this four times weekly. That takes place on Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And some of the pros that we've identified from this um, service edition, there's more availability for people to just kind of reserve the room um, to use independently. For staff, since it's just an hour long, it's maybe less fatiguing than the, the four hour event that we offer, I think the five hour event that we offer on Saturdays. Um, and then we're able to uh, include more library staff to tap into their skills. You know, every library staff has experience with, with different things, a different set of skills that can be leveraged for making. Um, one of our newest staff members has, um, has experience with cross stitch and embroidery. And that's just been so great to tap into. Some of our other staff members have experience with using um, digital art applications. And it's just really neat to see how diverse um, the skill set of our library staff um, uh, that way we can serve our community and, and, and meet more people in, in terms of making. Um, so there's just another snapshot of, of the hours of operation for Make It. So if you're ever interested, feel free to you know, book online. Um, and I think you'll, you'll be really happy um, with the service. You did? Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry, Susan, we have to pass that around. See? Susan made an appointment on Monday. And, I did. and why don't you tell us what you made? <laughs> Oh my word, it's beautiful. Oh, it's so For those looking online, here's a look at the uh, the earrings we did with the laser cutter. And we'll show you what Susan made in a second. Yeah, and that took five minutes to design on the software. It's free software that you can use to do that. Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to pass a few more things that uh, were made with our laser cutter so you can get an idea oh, yeah. of what the laser cutter can do. Here's a look at what Susan made and to make it. So Susan's name. It's almost like a name tag. Um, yeah. So Susan, I'm going to use print things. Uh, it's, so it's a really strong laser beam that carves no, the I mean, materials. This the, the product, is this used to print things? Then? No, it's yeah. laser cut. Laser cut. It's not really printed. It's like a strong laser beam that will etch. No, but I mean, what did they use this for? Um, it could be signage. It could be. I was jewelry. wondering if they would print. Yeah. Oh, like a stamp. Yeah. Maybe you could try this. That. Yeah. Um. So we have some make it success stories. Some of the some of the really neat things that we've seen from people that um, use this particular service. One of our 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 customers named John um, received a. a a grant from the Pacific Planetarium Association to create safe planetarium pointers. So usually in a planetarium, it, you might see a laser pointer like I have here to point out constellations. He thought, let's create pointers that attendees can use that feature an LED. So safe for your eyes to look at with an arrow. So he used our 3D printer to print the casing for his um, planetarium pointer and prototyped it at least two times here at the Belmont Library. So that was a really neat use case. Um, another one that, another example that we'll start to see is um, people achieving independence because they're, they're frequent users. So we have a family that comes in, a family of three, and they've become quite proficient with our laser cutter and our vinyl cutter. So on the screen here, you'll, you're seeing some t-shirts that they, they made at the library using our vinyl cutting software, our, our vinyl cutter, 
and bringing in their own t-shirts. So all the uh, graphics you're seeing on the t-shirts that was cut out here at the library, we have a heat press, they ironed it onto the t-shirt in a matter of minutes, and they left with some awesome t-shirts, and they did that with little to no help at all. So really exciting, and I think that's the end goal that we're all looking for in our library system, empower the community with, with tools to bridge the digital divide, to have these transformative experiences, and to be able to use the library in a new way, you know, a, a new innovative way. I mean, last, I, I mentioned to you our teen sewers. Gosh, they've been coming weekly, I want to say maybe since the winter or fall, and you just never know when they're going to show up, um, but they're featured here, but they'll come after school, and I think it's a really nice creative outlet to get their mind off studying, to pursue um, future endeavors, to, to develop a skill set for clothing creation, and one of the neat things I think that that has stemmed from um, these male teenagers coming to our library is demystifying sewing and breaking stereotypes of sewing. It's just been so cool. Sometimes in that room, they'll have seven or eight friends that are in there. Maybe half of them are using the machines. Um, they, we've also developed such a good relationship. They're giving us pointers as to what kind of fabric we need to help them create their clothing creations. And we've um, been able to use some of our maker funding to secure particular types of fabrics for them. So it's been a great relationship and they've really befriended library staff. So um, a really great success story. We call them the power sewers. Um, and they were just here last, last week, yeah. sewing away. <clears throat> um, another uh, interesting use case is some of our, um, some of the schools will wanna come and use the room to bring their class in maybe as an incentive for, um, um, for getting, you know, um, scoring high or, or getting, uh, create, uh, accomplishing goals, then they'll get to come in and use the space. And it's just been great to see how happy the students are um, to have access for their group only to use equipment and add help from library staff. Okay, the next service approach, we call it Maker Hangouts. That happens four times weekly and it's ending in four minutes now. Um, that happens mostly in our Oracle room. It's all drop-in. So you don't need to make a reservation. You can come in um, four times a week. And you, what you'll, what's common to see is on, we'll have a whiteboard with a wait list. So if you want to 3D print something or laser cut something, you'll just put your name in a line. There may be no line whatsoever, but you'll get served in, you know, in the order that you signed up in and you'll be able to use the technology with help from a library staff. Um, one of the things, if I don't highlight this in the next couple of slides is we've built, a, we've built a great relationship with community and we have volunteers, we call them maker volunteers. We must have anywhere from five to 10 maker volunteers that help us weekly, teenagers, adults. And it's really heartfelt and heartwarming that community members will give their precious time to help others come, you know, others that come to the library to create passion projects, to teach them skills, to work with them, because your time is your greatest commodity. And it's neat to see students 14 years of age, that's the youngest age you can be as, you know, volunteer. We have um, volunteers that, that fall into that 14, 15, 16 age range that are here weekly. It's just great. And it really helps us as staff offer a lot more because maybe one staff member, you might be able to oversee one or two different activities, but when you have volunteers working with you, you can just offer a wide range of things um, all at once. Um, so here's a look at our schedule. Uh, we have Tuesday and Thursday evenings from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Um, a lot of the times we'll see adults and families visit the space. Um, throughout the school year, Wednesdays from two to four, we have a lot of students that come in. We talked about that third space earlier. I remember around holiday season, people were using our vinyl cutter and laser cutters to make gifts, you know, and um, all the consumables, they're all free. So sometimes people will say, how much does it cost to use the reprinter? Or how much does it cost to use the laser cutter, vinyl cutter? And it's so fun to just tell them it costs nothing at all. It's completely free of charge. On um, Saturdays, we were able to expand that from uh, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. We just want something that lasts almost the entire duration of our, our operation, our business hours. Um, and so we have that maker hangout. And on, on that day, we have a lot of volunteers that will help out. And we have 
three different library staff members that take turns overseeing this particular service. So it's neat to see that everyone's um, invested into uh, improving the lives of the community in championing, championing uh, making. Uh, we have a mantra at San Mateo County Libraries. We, 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 we use the mantra, everyone is a maker. And we're seeing that firsthand on a weekly basis here. Um, so here's some of the spotlights. One of our one of my colleagues, Erica Hamilton, amazing, amazing, amazing colleague, um, decided to come up with food inspired project based sewing activities. So you can see in these pictures we have watermelon and raviolis. And I don't know if it's an empanada on the right or it might be a dumpling, but Erica keeps coming up with these wonderful ideas that teaches people of all ages the basics of sewing. And of course, the more elaborate the food, the more complex set of skills you need for sewing, but there's a progression that happens, right? So you might start with your ravioli and work your way up to a watermelon, um, but it's really neat to see. Okay, we'll move forward. And here's just a snapshot, you know, a, 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 you know, a, week, a week glance of, of what we have to offer. So, offer. so you can see the drop in at the top. You see our drop in sewing program. We push that uh, 10 to one. And then the reservations, which we call make it. Um, they're all there. And you can find this signage on the door of the Oracle room. Um, and I think we have it posted at um, on one of our tables in the library as well. So I'd encourage you all to, to check out some of the maker offerings we have. Library exhibits. So we are, you know, we're moving through this. We have, I think, just a couple more slides to go. So I want to applaud everyone for, for listening. Um, but it's just so exciting to see what we're offering. I take great joy and, and I'm very proud to see what we're doing here at the Belmont Library and San Mateo King Libraries. So some of the library exhibits I'm going to highlight. We have, this is all new, and it, some of this stemmed from um, different librarians that we've had here, uh, Cherry Cruzat and um, our assistant manager, former librarian, now assistant manager, Chris Liu, um, my colleague Lynn Fetter, they all have played um, big parts in, in making these exhibits come, come to fruition. So we have our plant library that's featured in this photo here on the right. We will propagate plants and we will put out cuttings weekly, sometimes based on staff availability as well. For the community to take so like at the front this is the picture taken today but at the front the smaller leaves that you're seeing are, are pothos you can propagate them and leave them in water eventually uh, the plant will start to root and then you, you put that into soil a little pot and it'll just continue to grow and grow and grow um sometimes we have community members that will bring in cuttings or or plants for us to use in our plant library and i think that's something we're looking um looking for help from our community members to help us kind of um, to staff and um, replenish our plant library because not a lot of libraries offer it and you know when you get a plant for free they add so much happiness to a household or a workspace or whatever it may be and to see them grow it's just I know there's just a great sense of happiness that comes um, from plants uh, then we have our seed library that's featured on the left it's like an old card catalog that you see in the old old library your know, libraries of old and, but inside them we have seeds so if you're ever interested maybe you have a, a planter box or you're looking for something for your garden why not look to um, our seed library and we, we take donations seed donations as well that helps us restock um and then the last one let's see if i can jump to the next slide here we have our bug exhibits that launched i want to say maybe it was april march or april maybe may I mean, so I think it officially launched late April or May, but we had bug exhibits. We were piloting them here, maybe since February. Um, I think currently we have like four different exhibits. So on the left, we have Banjo. That is our assistant manager's pet tarantula. <laughs> and today the tarantula was hiding out underneath this coconut shell. And the tarantula molted last week. So that was wow. kind of a neat thing to see. Um, one of the things that Cherry and, and Chris have brought to the library in the middle is uh, caterpillars that will you know, turn into butterflies. So you get to kind of see the life cycle. And then once they're butterflies, we set them free in Bellamita Park. And we'll make it maybe a library intercom announcement to let people know. <laughs> We're setting free the, the butterflies, come out and participate and watch. Really special. 
And then on, uh, so then there's two more exhibits. I think you'll find them next to our self checkout stations. There's a few more things. And then on the opposite side of the information desk facing the children's side, we have a vinegaroon. It reminds me of a scorpion. I don't know much about insects. When I look at it, it looks like it has like the, the claws or the pinchers <laughs> of a scorpion. Um, but they, it's the curiosity that our customers bring forth, it's just worth it. You know, we have families that will, can we help you? Do you need help with anything? No, we're just looking at your insects. We didn't, we never had that in the past. And now that we have it to offer, it just makes so much, it's so smart to offer these live exhibits. And all 13 of our libraries have um, insect exhibits. So really exciting. Okay, moving forward. Our mobile memory lab that is just right in front of me again. It's here at Belmont through June 22nd, 2023. Um, this started, I want to say maybe back, I think it's this year as well. We have three, three libraries have permanent mobile, <laughs> permanent memory labs, Half Moon Bay, Brisbane and Atherton. And the idea behind it is as we move forward in time, we have obsolete or old media that has important memories that we just can't access anymore, right? But if we can give the community and library staff tools to kind of digitize these memories and share them with generations to come, we are doing a great service in keeping traditions, family histories alive, not just for family, but you know, for society, for um, historians, you know, there's just a wealth of, of reasons why you want to digitize media. So on the screen here, we're, we can take a look at the particular media or old media we can digitize. So photos, negatives, photographic slides. We had someone today that booked the memory lab and they were digitizing slides and photos. Her slides were from the 1940s. Really neat. Um, VHS and VHS C cassettes, audio cassettes, eight millimeter and super eight film. So that device that's on the top of the memory lab, it looks like it has a reel. You, if you have film like eight millimeter super eight, we can do that. The only thing with super eight is it doesn't um, digitize the audio. 3.5 inch floppy disks and then CDR and DVDR data disks. Um, when we were asked to request the mobile memory lab, I was intimidated at that. Oh my gosh, I know nothing about digitizing media. I was scared. But my colleague, Gary Ransford, allowed me to have a one-on-one. -on -one. And what I took from it was a life-changing experience. I went to my parents' house like on a Sunday, knowing I'd meet with my colleague Gary on a Tuesday, and I borrowed VHS tapes. One was called like The Lion and the Lamb. It was a commercial recording that my mom wanted to digitize. We don't have a VCR, we bought the movie. Um, and um, another one was labeled Disneyland Trip 1989 <laughs> and David's Preschool Graduation. I'm oh. David, obviously. So the first thing I tried to digitize was the Disneyland Trip 89. And I was able to relive an experience that I had no recollection of. My sister and I running around Disneyland as three and two year olds <laughs> in a celebrity that they had a parade for that I had no idea I came in close contact with. There is this big float going down the road with Mickey Mouse and like a marching band. And um, this really tall gentleman gets on stage and Disneyland's awarding some sort of Disney honor for this particular person in 1989. It turns out is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, oh, wow. who just retired from the National Basketball Association and was like, became this honorary Disney figure. And you told me if, if before that memory, if you told me I met Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or I was somewhere near him, I said, no way. Now I can say I was, yeah, maybe 50 yards away from him and my parents were there watching. It was spectacular. I digitized six minutes of this film. I showed it to my, my parents and all they said is, why do you only digitize six minutes? <laughs> <laughs> And that was it. They go, show me more of, you, of the kids and less of Kareem. It was really funny. So I need to take you to do that. And so it's a minute to minute to minute conversion. So if it's 30 minutes long, it'll take you 30 minutes. Oh, wow. But it's fast and easy. And we can plug in an, uh, a flat screen to it and you can watch it in real time. Um, just so fun. And, and just, I think everyone will have a similar experience when you get to see those family members that may not be here anymore, those places you visited. And so that's why I've, I've been just letting people know, if you, if you want to use this before it leaves, send me an email because we have 
in terms of reserving, we have one appointment a week for one hour, just because we're kind of stretched thin, we're kind of short staffed right now. But if there's ways we can, creative ways we can bring it out and let people use it, we'll, we'll try to explore those ways. So Foster, how long will you have it? Till June 22nd. Foster so, City's gonna So does it go from library to yeah, library? Yeah, other libraries requested it. So Foster City has it. And then after that, I think it's North Fair Oaks and Redwood City. And then hopefully it'll just continue to cycle. So hopefully we'll get it back. And I think one of the things our IT department shared with me is there should be more on the horizon. So it'd, it'd be really neat to see if Belmont or some of the other libraries nearby San Carlos get one so we can point community members in that direction. Um, okay, let's move forward. Oh, okay, we're, I think we're coming to the end of our presentation. Oh my gosh. So if you have any questions, I encourage and invite you to send me an email. I feel like I'm looking at my emails daily. So I'll do my best to get back with you in 24, get back to you in 24 to 48 hours. If you need to email my manager and a coach, Anna's email is there. Same with our assistant manager, Chris, our senior librarian. I call him my assistant manager. Um, Chris's information is there. And Selena, you, Selena has been instrumental in, in overseeing all the maker outcomes that we have at the uh, Belmont Library. Selena's information is there as well. Um, so my last slide of the day, any questions? I don't know if there's any, there does there's, there's not need to be any questions, but I'm here to take questions and talk about anything. Oh, and the, the books under the table, we're having a virtual author event. Those are all giveaways. So if you'd like to leave with a free book today, you're more than welcome to. Yeah. Do you have some Zoom questions? You, what was that? Do you have some Zoom questions? Oh my gosh, let's see if I can open up the Zoom questions. Let's open that right now, Q&A. Okay, so John, I have this uh, up here. I have applied to the library to lead a meditation group. I'm a member of California Clubhouse and I lead a guided meditation group there. I'm interested in doing this. Can I be contacted? Well, John, I can, I can direct you back to my email address. Let me go back to that slide. Let's see if I can get that going. And uh, let me move this over. So why don't you send me an email with a little bit more about what you're looking to do? And I can see if I can be of any assistance to you. And on our website, there is, um, I think there's something called suggest an experience that's monitored. Let's see if I can go to the library website right now to show you where you find that. So I'm going to switch screens here. Open up Chrome, smcl.org. Let me move this over. I know I'm sharing my screen. Okay, so as you, if you go to our, for John, if you go to our website, smcl.org, at the bottom of the page, the sitemap footer, let's go there right now. It's called submit a program idea. So John, if you're looking to implement this system wide, it, you know, all 13 libraries or several of our libraries, you can start here and you can just follow the instructions to submit your program idea that you have that you shared. And I wanna thank you for sharing that. Um, let's see if I can go back to my slideshow. Okay. And yeah, please do send me an email as well if I can be of any assistance. I'll do my best to help you out. Um, yeah, so there's no questions. I want to thank there's everyone. There's something in chat. There is? Yeah. Let's open the chat. Yeah. Let's, let's look at the chat, too. Yes. Oh, okay. This is from Susan. Somebody up, up above. Susan, is this you? Yeah, somebody up above said they're learning so much. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So it's good feedback. And then I said the recording is going to be. Uh, on the Belmont website. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. I want to give a huge shout out to the city of Belmont for having these Belmont talks because they're informative. I really think it brings parks and rec. Yeah, yeah. Parks, parks and rec. Yeah. That's part of the city of Belmont. Yeah. Okay. Well, parks and parks and rec department, Bridget. I mean, Susan, you're really bringing a lot of different services and organizations to the forefront. And um, like last month was Toastmasters. And I think it's yeah. really great for the community to be able to access these videos to learn more about what the city has to offer what people are offering to the community so yeah if there are no other questions at this time i want to thank you all for coming thank you um do look out for our library newsletter and you can check uh our website to look at events um library events that are happening so you can stay up to date there might be something that's of interest to you yeah 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 my pleasure thank you. Thank yeah you my pleasure much. you all are excellent david this was fantastic i learned so much 
Oh, Bridget, so glad to hear your voice. I thought I, I thought I knew a bunch of, I thought I knew all this and I, I learned a bunch of things. So I'm thank so you. happy. This was a wonderful opportunity. Thanks again. You bet. All right. Bye. Good everybody. Take care. Okay, bye.